So welcome back to Codeblaze. In the last episode, we basically created a job which could create cubes at runtime. And I promised in the last episode that this episode we would be going over the burst compiler. And that's not what we are going to do today. Since the burst compiler, I thought like the burst compiler part is pretty small. There's not much of the programmatical side. So we'll be tackling burst compiler at the end of the series when we are done with the jobs regarding the voxel chunk generation in this episode we'll be experimenting furthermore with uh, the job system so actually you don't need to follow along in this episode we won't be doing anything specific related to our end goal uh, we'll just be experimenting with the job system and understanding what actually the use of job system is in unity and this is something that i did in my test run also when i um, when i was basically creating and verifying the code and this was the way I actually implemented my testing code but uh, later I found out on the for when I searched the forums that it is technically wrong and so I want to show you what we are going to experiment with today why it is wrong and what actually the job system's purpose is so with that uh, let's get back to our code so in the cube uh, component where we schedule the job and complete it so this part of the code is what we are going to look at so by doing it this way, we are not actually taking any benefit for from multi-threading since we are scheduling it and waiting for it to complete. This is actually slower than a single threaded code since we are basically adding the threading overhead and nothing else. So we may need to like you may think in a way that if I can have uh, the job being done in background and I get to know whenever the job is complete and on complete I can call the method. I can call a separate method through which I can retrieve the result of the jobs. So that would be the optimal way so that I can just schedule the jobs and forget about it. And on complete, I can basically get the results that I want and I can have some other processing done on the main thread. And that was my thinking also. So I basically uh, checked the job handle, what all properties it has and it has this is complete property which returns false if the task is running and returns true if the task has been completed so one way to do this would be like create a while loop here and whenever it is false we can basically continue the iteration of the loop but that won't be any different than single threaded code the other way to do this would be checking it in the update method so we can have the games update loop running differently and our job happening differently on and on each update we can check whether the job has been completed or not and that was the route that i took and i thought that would be correct so let's just implement that and see if there would be any problems or not okay so we'll implement the update method here and for that we need to create this job handle as the member variable so we create private job handle job handle and we'll remove this wire here next uh, we'll create an on complete method private void on complete and we can basically move all this code here in on complete so whenever the job is complete we will basically retrieve the mesh data for now we can remove this and the only thing now that's needed is for mesh data to also be a member variable so we'll have private mesh data and mesh data so again we can remove this bar here and our mesh data is also a member variable and in our update method we'll also need a flag also private bool job completed so if the job is not completed job is not completed and the job handle says that it has been completed then we will say that job completed is equal to true 
and we'll call our on complete so this way we can make sure that the on complete is called only once and not again and again since if we call the on complete again and again the native arrays would have been disposed which will cause errors so if we run this code and we'll wait for unity to refresh open the console and run it so if we run this code we are actually getting an error and we also get errors that uh, the native collection has been disposed but this is the error that we are actually looking at so the native collections is four frames old like there are multiple errors here but the main thing here is you must call job handle dot complete okay so you may think like if the job is complete there may no there may not be any need to call job handle dot complete since the main reason for calling the complete method on the job handle is to wait for the job to complete but that's not the only reason we need to call that method so whenever you sh schedule a job with the job system unity internally allocates some native memory and we know that whenever native memory has been allocated we need to dispose of it manually so by calling the on complete on the job handle unity internally disposes of the native memory it allocated for the job okay and if we call the job comp uh, the job handle complete method after is completed is true there is uh, no overhead since there won't be the complete method won't be waiting for anything and it will just dispose of the extra native memory that was internally allocated so even if you check this condition you still need to call the complete method so that's one take take away from this so let's again play play it and see if we get any more errors clear and let's play it so there are no errors and you could see our cube appeared a little later so that means our update logic was also running on the main thread and now you would assume that this is the correct thing to do but it is actually not since the main problem comes here is with the native memories that have been allocated so all of the native memories regarding the job system use the temp job allocator which keeps those memories alive for four frames now this four frames is the real problem here so in this case our job was really small and mostly it would be over on any system in a single frame but if you have a somewhat uh, taxing job it would take uh, a little bit more time now on a slow system where the frame rate of your game is pretty low suppose you created your jobs targeting 60 fps you may complete your jobs in four frames but if somebody is running it on a pretty beefy system he may be running it on 140 fps or so somewhat like that now for him the time given to that job reduces since four frames will occur pretty fast now you may question why unity has imposed a restriction on the number of frames since it is actually dependent upon the system on which the game is running and it's not easy to uh, do it with the number of frames so the real reason this is done is for or the reason that i think is because the jobs that you schedule should be over in a single frame your job should be small and simple enough to be over in the single frame the unity job system isn't designed for long running background jobs it may support it in the future but after searching the forums and some of the reading some of the answers by the unity dev people it was pretty clear to me that this job system isn't uh, designed for long running jobs and what it is actually meant for is suppose you have an uh, update logic of your game of 20 milliseconds okay so you can now divide your update logic into simple jobs that you schedule early in the frame and complete late in the frame so all your jobs should complete in a single frame and if that is the restriction here then this four frame limit is pretty fine 
the four frame limit actually gives you some buffer and later on if your jobs exceed the four frame limit it will throw errors right now you could see we were getting warnings but this cube job is simple so we didn't get any warning here so that is what i wanted to convey in this video like you may think that this method of doing it is correct since you are waiting for the job to complete and and here in the update you can do some other stuff but technically it is not correct and it is not following what the job system was intended to do and later on with the maturity of the job system package doing this could lead to errors or compiler warnings or something like that so that's all for this video and from the next video we'll be properly diving into voxel chunk generation thanks for watching if you have any any other suggestions please leave them down below in the comments and do subscribe for the upcoming content bye